Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 4 says, Having become so much better than the angels, speaking of Jesus, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they, for to which of the angels did he ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. The Lord gave us in few verses here in Hebrews further description of who Jesus is. It says in verse 4 of what we read, Hebrews chapter 1, having become so much better than the angels. And then it says, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. You notice the duality here? Jesus Christ has become, but he already was. By acquisition, he acquired something, and by inheritance, he was already something. By acquisition... He became better than the angels. How did he become better than the angels? Remember the Lord Jesus was brought lower than the angels by incarnation. In that crib in Bethlehem, he was there among animals. I want to tell you that doesn't make you in a very good shape, does it? I don't think any one of you would like to sleep with animals. Raise your hand if you do. I'm talking about not dogs that are that are cute and, and, and domesticated. I'm talking about wild animals. I'm talking about, you know, sheep and donkeys and alike. Nobody wants to sleep in a stable. But Jesus Christ came to be lower than the angels in a stable. But then he became higher than the angels. When did the Lord Jesus become higher than the angels? He became higher than the angels at his resurrection. No angel was resurrected from the dead. He became higher than the angels at his ascension. Right before people, he ascended into heaven. He became higher than the angels by his exaltation. There seated at the throne of glory. Jesus Christ became higher than the angels he became but by inheritance he has always been the son of god the eternal son of god equal with god he has never stopped being god but for a moment he was made lower than the angels and then he was exalted higher than the angels he became higher than the angels but he already was by inheritance. So he acquired superiority and he by inheritance had already superiority. You see that verse 4 that tells you the duality of the Lord Jesus and unfortunately this is why the cults don't understand that. They would like to ascribe to Lord Jesus only humanity and they quote this second verse quite often which unfortunately, last week somebody asked me about it, so I thought I'll say a couple words about it. Because they say, you see, it says in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 5, for to which of the angels did he ever say, my, you are my son, today I have begotten you. The cults say, you see, Lord Jesus was nothing until he was begotten. That doesn't speak about him being begotten. He is the eternal begotten Son of God who was manifested on the scene of the world. But he was always the begotten. You see, he 
acquired a higher status by his ascension, by his, by his exaltation. But he was always the son of God. By inheritance, he is a more excellent than they. And it says here, you are my Today I have begotten you. Again, again he says, I will be to him a father. He shall be to me a son. The angels are called the sons of God. Did you know that? It says in Psalm 89 verse 6, to the angels he calls them the, the sons of God. In other words, they are the creatures of God. But of Jesus Christ he's called the son. He's not like all other he's the son and it means by that that he has the preeminence over every creature to prove that he adds verse 6 he says but when he again brings the firstborn into the world the firstborn that's right jesus is the firstborn what does it mean that, that means he was born first that's what the cult says no it doesn't mean that you see, the title firstborn speaks of the preeminence. You know what the word preeminence is? In other words, he has the priority. He's number one. Not number one in chronology, but number one in status. He calls upon him in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 18. And he is the head of of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. This is a title of being the firstborn, means not because you were born first, but because you have the status, the position of preeminence. Jesus is the firstborn. He is the head of all creation. Not that he was created, but he is above all creation. And to prove it, and to stamp it with the stamp of God, he adds Hebrews chapter 1 verse 6. Listen to what he says. But when he again brings the firstborn to the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. Who are we supposed to worship? Jesus. Remember? Satan, when he was tempted, the Lord Jesus in the wilderness... He said, to you, I give you all these things. And he showed him all the kingdoms of the world. If you just bow down and worship me. What did the Lord Jesus answer him? Away from me, Satan. Because it is written, the Lord God, you shall worship and him alone. You shall serve. It is idolatry to worship anybody else but God. It is, it is a symbol of Satanism to worship anybody but God. But God says, I want you to worship my son. What does it mean? That the son and the father are equal. They're the same God. They're the same God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are equal. Therefore, God the Father said, I want you to worship my Son. He is God. This is not about someone. God the Father doesn't want us to commit idolatry. He's not a creature. He is God Almighty who appeared on this scene on a day like this. 2,000 years ago, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit got together and God the Father said to God the Son, we are blessing you, go ahead with your mission. And God the Son came down and was conceived as a human being without a man, without sin, holy as he is. Awesome as he is, great as he is, as a child. God became a child. Why? In order to complete the race and go here to the cross. As a human, he could now represent me and you. 
as a human, he qualifies to represent humanity. But as God, he can now link humanity with divinity. That the two can be linked together. That this gap that was produced by sin when Adam and Eve fell in the garden can be bridged up by the offering of the blood of Jesus Christ. God, the first begotten of the Father, the preeminent Son of God, eternal Son of God, came down lower than the angels, but soon he was made, became higher than the angels after his death, ascension, and exaltation. And now God the Father said, I want the angels and everyone else to worship him. To him God gave him a name that is above all name that every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We are here to worship the Lord Jesus. Commanded by God the Father. The angels are in our midst bowing down before him. When we sing about him, let every knee bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's not a creature. He's the creator of all creatures. The firstborn among all creation, the one who is the preeminent. He has the first position above every one of us. May it be so in your heart. May it be so with you. I want to tell you, I sent a text. I don't know how many people got that text from me that I sent. How many people got that text? Raise your hand about Christmas. In it, I said, to whom should Christmas be merry? Everybody now is saying, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. But to whom should Christmas be merry? Not to all. The Bible says that it can only be merry to you, happy to you, if you are pleasing to God, how can I be pleasing to God? Well, here goes. In Luke chapter 2, verse 14, when the Lord Jesus came out from the water, having been baptized, there came the Holy Spirit upon him as a dove, and a voice was heard from heaven. God the Father. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. You want to be pleasing to God? You need to be joined with the one who pleased him, the Lord Jesus. You have to come to him by faith. Confess that you're a sinner. And come and be joined to him by his, by his grace, by his work on the cross. And then, having done that, if you want to continue being pleasing to God, it says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, that we may continue and persevere in loving, in peace with other people, and in holiness, without which no one can see God. You enter the circumference, the circle of pleasing God when you joined with Jesus Christ by the new birth. And you continue in that same circle by leading a life of peace, of love, and of holiness. Where do I get the power to do that? By the Holy Spirit that comes to you when you enter the circle of Jesus Christ.